In this video, I'm going to review three top secret techniques that experts use to debug why their regex isn't working. Regular expressions have a reputation of being confusing and hard to use, but I'll offer an alternative perspective, which is that regular expressions are easy, and it's actually the escaping rules that cause people most of their problems. To explain the first technique, let's start with an example problem. Here's a file containing a single line of text. Let's assume that we want to do a replacement on the text in this file. For this example, we want to take these two backslashes around the plus character and turn them into forward slashes, like this. But we want to do this automatically using a regular expression. So here we have a simple Java program that does a very simple regex replacement on the file. And all we need to do is replace this with the actual regex that describes the pattern that we want to have replaced. So we said before that we want to replace a backslash followed by a plus followed by another backslash with the forward slash plus and another forward slash. So as you can see by the syntax highlighting, this is probably not going to work, but let's go ahead and try it anyway. Okay, that gives a compiler error, which is not surprising. So since this is a string literal in Java, it's pretty obvious that we need to escape the backslashes in this Java string literal. So that should fix our compile issue. Now let's go ahead and try this. Okay, that doesn't work either. Now, as you probably know, a plus character has a special meaning in regular expressions. So we need to escape it with a backslash. But if we just write one backslash, we're back to the escaping issue with the string literal in Java. So we need at least two of them in order to escape the plus. So let's try this. Okay, now we have another issue. So the regular expression here is starting to look pretty complicated. And this already looks pretty much nothing like the actual pattern that we want to search for. So the first technique that experts use is to separate your escaping problems, because we actually have two escaping problems here. One escaping problem is to obey the escaping rules of the Java programming language. So when we specify a string literal, some of this escaping here is for Java. But then we have a completely different set of escaping rules for the regular expression. And trying to keep all of the escaping rules in your head at once is just too mentally taxing. So the best technique is to separate the overall regular expression problem into two problems. The first problem is verifying that you're actually specifying the regular expression that you're intending to in your target programming language. And the second problem is making sure you're writing the regular expression correctly. So let's go ahead and run this and verify what string we're actually passing into the regular expression parser. So here we can see the string that's actually being treated as the regular expression for the search pattern. And since we're treating the plus as a literal, you can see that it's escaped here, but it's surrounded by these two backslash characters. And backslash characters, as you may recall, also need to be escaped in a regular expression. So these backslash characters at the start and end of the regular expression need to be escaped not only in the Java string literal, but also in the regular expression itself. So this means we need even more backslash characters. Okay, let's try this. Okay, that looks like it worked. And as you can see, our regular expression has a lot of backslash characters in it. Two for the leading backslash, two for the trailing backslash, and one for the plus character. Looking back at the Java code, it almost seems unbelievable how many backslashes we need but this is truly how many are necessary. And one of the most frequent points of confusion is not verifying the actual string you're passing into the regular expression parser. This need to verify escaping rules is especially important in the shell environment. Let's assume we have a file containing quoted statements like this. Every quoted statement contains the word cache written like this with the dollar sign. The word cache is surrounded by various statements that we don't know beforehand. So we have to match them with a wildcard in the regular expression. The first thought might be to use a grep statement like this, but this doesn't find anything. Let's run an echo statement with this regular expression to see what's actually being passed into grep. Here's the problem. The dollar sign in the word cache is being interpreted as a shell variable because we use double quotes. Let's try it again using single quotes. This doesn't work because the search pattern itself contains single quotes. We need to find a way to specify both the dollar sign literally and single quotes. It turns out that in bash, the best way to do this is to take advantage of how string concatenation works. 
This echo statement contains three strings that will be all concatenated together. The first is a double quoted string containing a single single quote. The second is a single quoted string containing the middle part of our regex. And the last is another double quoted string containing a single single quote. Let's try this. That looks a bit better. Now that we've successfully verified the escaping rules of the enclosing language, let's try passing this as an argument to our grep search. Look at that, it worked perfectly. The second technique that experts use involves avoiding escaping altogether. Let's assume that we have a file containing a bunch of text. Some of the words in this text are surrounded by braces. In our case, we want to extract all of the words that are surrounded by braces, including the braces themselves. You could use a grep statement like this. By default, grep uses basic regular expression mode, but it's also common to use the dash key flag for extended regular expressions. But in this case, we don't get the leading brace. That's because the escaping rules are different in extended regular expression mode. It's also popular to use the dash p flag for Perl compatible regular expression mode. But as you can see, we have to think about different escaping rules for different modes. Most people don't care to learn the nuances between the different regular expression modes and their different escaping rules. An alternative way to write this regular expression that allows you to not think about the escaping rules is to put every character that might need escaping inside a character class. It might seem pointless to put a single character inside a character class, but it's actually very useful because the regular expression escaping rules are much simpler inside a character class than they are outside. Let's try this again. As you can see, this works in basic mode, in extended mode, and in Perl compatible regular expression mode. Let's do another quick example. This file contains a few simple math statements. We could use a regular expression like this to extract each of the mathematical statements. But this regular expression looks a bit confusing with all the backslashes. You can instead rewrite the regular expression like this. And now the regex doesn't contain any backslashes at all. This makes the regex a bit more portable and, in my opinion, a bit more clear too. The third technique that experts use is to verify that the regex actually works from the ground up. It's often the case that someone will try a long and complicated regex, and when it doesn't work the first time, they'll just give up. Let's do an example of debugging a regex that matches XML tags. I'm aware you're not supposed to use regular expressions to match XML, but we're going to do so anyway. For this example, our goal is to search for instances of some tag. If the contents of some tag starts with a plus, we want to replace the outer tag with better tag, but keep the same contents without the plus. Here is a regular expression in Vim that performs this task for us. Since we want to learn about debugging regular expressions, we can hit the U key in Vim to undo the changes we just made and try again. At this point, it's a good time to introduce a Vim feature called magic. You can read about this in Vim by running the command help magic. Vim offers you a few different options to control whether regular expression characters need to be escaped or not. For this example, I'm going to turn on the very magic flag this will change the meaning of some of the regular expression characters in the replacement pattern that we just used. It's very useful to know that in Vim, when writing X commands, you can press the up arrow key to get recent X commands. In order to use very magic in our regex, we can type slash V. Now when we try to run this replacement rule, it doesn't work. Let's try to debug it. First, let's simplify this as much as possible. Let's start with a meaningless regex that's so simple it doesn't really do anything. We'll start by trying to replace the opening angle bracket with another opening angle bracket. To clarify things, let's review every part of this vim command. This part says look at all lines of the file. This forward slash says begin the regex. This part says turn on very magic, which changes the escaping rules. This opening angle bracket is the only part of the statement that's actually a regex. This forward slash says we're done specifying the regex. This opening angle bracket is what our search pattern will be replaced with. This forward slash says we're done specifying the replacement rule. The G stands for global and the C stands for confirm. Let's try running this. As you can see, this is not doing what we expect. Let's press escape and U to get rid of these recent changes. Now let's go back and change our replacement rule since it clearly doesn't work. We'll use escape, colon, and up 
Clearly, the opening angle bracket needs to be escaped because it has some special meaning that it didn't before. Okay, now it seems like we're getting somewhere. So now we can replace the angle bracket with another angle bracket. That's one step closer to what we want. Now let's try one step further. Okay, what we just tried kind of works, but we're still having problems with the second angle bracket. So we need to escape that. Now let's try including the plus. So this matched the line with the plus, but it's also matching lines that don't have the plus, and that's not what we want. So we must need to escape the plus character. And that looks better, because it's only doing the replacement on lines with the plus. Now let's try matching the first capture group just like we did before. And to simplify things, let's put nothing in the capture group and see what this does. So this doesn't find anything, which shouldn't be the case because it should be able to match this and then match zero characters after the plus. But it didn't, so it must be treating these parentheses literally. So let's not escape them. Okay, it looks like this is working. Now let's try to actually capture the contents of the tag. So anything that's not an angle bracket repeated zero or more times. All right, that looks better. Now let's include the back reference. All right, we're halfway there. We just need to replace the closing tag. So just like before, we will escape the angle brackets Okay, let's try this. Trailing characters. So I just made a mistake here on purpose. And this is a common mistake when your search pattern includes a forward slash. A forward slash doesn't have to be escaped in a regular expression. But it's important to note that a forward slash is used to separate the regular expression from the replacement rule. So what's happening here is Vim believes that everything up till this point is our regular expression and everything after this is what it's going to be replaced with. Everything after this point doesn't fit the pattern that Vim expects, so it complains with trailing characters. That's why we need to escape these forward slashes, so Vim understands where the pattern begins and ends. Let's try this. All right, that looks like it does exactly what we want.